Foot massage. I am not sure I understand. Real and it like leans over and says, Miku, would you deny those who are supposed to be the equals of the Zan the same opportunities afforded to the Zan? <laughs> you evil motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> uh, Miku like, looks down at the thing and like seems to think, and then like he slowly shakes his head and. Uh, I I suppose not, Rillanid. In fact, if we showed any less in the way of prosperity, our, our supposed friends might turn against us, thinking us too weak to stand on our own. The largesse and greatness must be displayed so that we can be shown to be capable of standing on our own if necessary. Accusing glare from the blue eyes. <laughs> And there he looks at Niku and says, uh, I'm sure you will find the money we need. He uh, lets out a sigh sound and says, I, uh, I will do my best. That reduces the treasury to seven. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic, you know. I just wish that every time we roll for this now, it's just going to be maximum every time. It's, just, it's fantastically lavish. Like, I don't have money for this. <laughs> I, you know, on one hand, I am sorry that I am rolling so high, but it completely fits my highly intelligent character to completely inflate the sniper. <laughs> to use all our money. Yeah, on, on useless things. <laughs> Hey, at least I put forth the effort into trying to plan to make us money, right? <laughs> can't even re-roll it now. <laughs> oh, well, that's being deducted. Yep, yep uh, like I said, like... the treasury is down to seven feet. <laughs> um, we have more. And, uh... Then uh, we move on <laughs> to... Bankrupt because of... <laughs> Spanish... <laughs> treaties? Oh, shit. Just be stupid. Oh goodness gracious! Does anyone else have any more edicts they want to? No, 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 no. Done. Do <laughs> some said me exploration mission. And things. Like a nope, chari charity, I, charity run. I am not gonna <laughs> F fund gathering. You know that that mushroom is gonna go bad. Poor me. You see, I was gonna walk up to Rillan and stab him in the back on the way out. This was the best way to save money. <laughs> 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 I am saving the treasury, Rillanid. I am removed the sure. largest expenditure. I could hear the money cry. <laughs> no. If you look at the chest, Rillanid, there isn't barely nothing there anymore. I must say what little there is. <laughs> I will take oh. you down with me. <laughs> I'm kick you into a well. Then you move into the income phase. That's Does anyone wish to make withdrawals from the treasury? Yes, then, but then we'll take all of it and put it somewhere safe. Run. Bolt for the door. I don't have that kind of money, but... You know. Nope. I think we'll leave it there. Alright. Make deposits. No. 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 Don't have the money right. for it. Collect have... taxes, then. Oh, right, goody. Uh, Look at yeah. Can I roll that again? Responsibility. Come on. 20. I, I, I want to roll you, that. Do you want to? Uh, yeah. yeah, go I, for I it. I want to. Go for it. That, that uh, is 34 deep. divided by 6. That's uh, five. 5. And then we add an extra 2 from the uh, the quarry, so that puts us back up to 14 BP. See, oh. the tax is paid off, everyone. It's not oh, a problem. Uh, the caster tower would give its first uh, shot yes. of 16 as well. Yep, Yes. sure would. That took, take, uh, puts us up to 30. Yep, as you know, as you know, the second sage uh, has, has spent the, uh, you know, the time uh, basically being helpful right away. He has um, certainly helped out in buildings and, like he, had, you know, you know, bent his magic and powers to, uh, to, to basically be very, very beneficiary for the king. Yeah, he has repaired stuff. He has supplied a new resources in form of weapons and tools specifically. And uh, he has even uh, drawn up some uh, interesting, you know, uh, plans uh, and general thoughts uh, about uh, cultivating the jungle. Does Miku like this 23 BP income increase? 
Uh, yes, Miku is very happy about that. I don't have to stab you, baby. <coughs> really, it's like, excuse me? <laughs> Nothing. Just <laughs> thinking out loud. <laughs> See you at the bottom of the whale. Um, well, yeah, well, <clears throat> that done, um, Miku actually, you know, clears his throat a bit and say, I, uh, there is one more thing that has come to my attention. He looks around. Oh, I nearly looked at him. What? Apparently, some time ago, Rillanid entered into a bargain with a collection of merchants in Fastavolt. Part of this treaty was that the merchant uh, gave him a magical item of some power. In return, Rillanid promised a free trade agreement with the merchant. Should we choose to honor this arrangement, tax money will be lost for some time. Honorary frowns. Everyone look at Rillanid. <laughs> The you know, and his amazing, like, scented oils and shit just, like, leans back in his chair and is like... My god, it's like having a teenage daughter. It's like, <laughs> really, it's just, yes, is there a problem? I do think the free trade agreement should be honored. After all, as the society is based on meritocracy, such powerful merchants who are capable of acquiring such powerful items that we can use in establishing this kingdom as well as expanding it further, especially into the Earth's wound as we go down to Risia, is of undeniable, va undeniable value. Betray this agreement, or outright depose the merchants in some fashion, and this kingdom will be shown to have reneged on this word. We'll have even fewer traders pass through. It is done. What? Powerful item did you get? Chuckles. Many. Miku declares his throat. If then we honor the agreement, I, uh, I, I calculate that we will lose about one BP oh, okay. uh, per turn what? for eight turns. God, that's so much money. What? When? <laughs> when did you do that? Fill in it. Like, like back in chapter three, chapter four, I think. Yeah, it's like a, a third or fourth session. Yeah, after we took faster Volt. Why did you do that? Now Power? we could have that guy <laughs> discreetly die. The, the, the writ that I gave this merchant was stipulated not to specifically apply to any named individual in particular, but to the holder of it. As such, if another merchant family, or if there were an accident, or if the writ were lost, or any other sort of horrible things, then no one would be around to hold it anymore. How does um, Miku and the gnomes react that we actually think about... So what if something happened to this motion? Uh, Ivy pipes in and says, uh, My lords, there has been rumor going about this uh, this treaty. Uh, the merchant has not really been um, uh, that discreet with it. He is quite proud of the agreement. Should something happen to him or it, I fear that um, the populace might be somewhat resentful. Unrest might increase. There is no need for this kingdom to act in any direct way. However, should the opportunity present itself and this merchant wave it a bit too much, you know, papers have been known to be lost all the time, I think. Or perhaps it suddenly turned out to be a fake. Who knows? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh. Dear. An action to encourage this would better. This makes him an incredibly rich gnome. 
this action was done both to secure the present as well as the future. By creating such an agreement, it creates competition between other merchants who would wish and never receive such a bargain, as well as others who might be interested in obtaining it from this merchant, as well as others. We're promoting trade that others would not. That is a lot of money to give to a random merchant gnome. It is not being given. Yeah, okay, sure, you got something. Deal made with respect, as I said, to the present and the future. That is an important consideration to ensure the stability. This kingdom will have a hard time prospering with our goals if no one trades with us. Then trucks. I suppose we can make it seem like those who treat with us, those who cooperate, get rewarded for it, I suppose. This can be spun into a positive for us, certainly. It's rewarded with a lot of money. Well, he frowns, but not slowly. It was maybe not the best sort of deal. However, it seems now that we are bound to honor it or acknowledge a failure within our own family. That is inconceivable. Well, Tristan looks around. Neither have we told that he's been very loud about it, so honoring it is all we really can do in this situation. Hmm. Make good nonsense. Very well. I shall uh, tell the merchant that the council will honor the agreement. He will be much pleased, I think. I bet he will. Elinary nods. Um, do write his name up for me, though. <laughs> and where he lives. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> suddenly a Baylor shows up. <laughs> when, when he is out of uh, the spotlight, you know, who knows what might happen. Alan Airy. Right. Are you going to do a uh, Guild 2 thing again? He's on his farm now, and no one is close. Get him! Like, uh, and Nori comes rushing out from the tower. Oh, she no. wouldn't do it, you know. No, no, we. we he, Just let, let's wait a couple of years. When he feels safe. You then send your rogues out from your house, which you've recruited, he to go kill went them. On a very long. Vacation. On his trip to Cladden Vault, you know. Yeah. He's yeah. fine. Got a On letter his fabulous from caravan. No. Yesterday. In time, perhaps he will. He will most likely uh, die unfortunate in an unfortunate accident, and he will not live long to enjoy the wealth he has gained from this. Seriously, what did you get from it? Gentleman does not disclose such things. <laughs> <laughs> did you get a brothel? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, he made a good brothel. Says, fo folding brothel. Folding brothel. <laughs> you know, if all we know he could have a brothel somewhere. It's Who the knows? mask, right? Inside his brothel. Yeah. It's, it's, it's inside the brothel when it has the mask on. <laughs> <laughs> that would make everything so awkward. That'd be weird. But you were inside a brothel all this time. Yes. Wouldn't surprise us. All right. Uh, with that, uh, Miku has nothing further to add. As he sort of deducts the, the money from the treasury. I guess we are done with the kingdom stuff? Yes, if no one has anything further to add. Well, not to the kingdom stuff directly, but Zin would speak up. There is the matter of the humans that were mentioned by Rain. As some of you may know. Yes, as some of you may know, but not everyone. We, well, Ivy here, found out something about a human adventuring party of sorts traveling through the tunnels which me and Rain intercepted. As it turns out, they are former slaves of the Durga on a way to find a way to the surface. One of the humans has visions of it and he knows the general direction of said entrance to the surface. And apparently it's towards the great jumping off point from here. He has offered to 
lead us there if we spare his life. I would suggest that we, at some point in the near future, explore around there. His visions might be limited, and it would, I think, help us a lot to know about this entrance to the surface. Well, it leans, you know, over to see Zen from down the table. How many are there still left alive? Uh, three of them. Two males and a female. A female? Perhaps this guard captain, or whatever he was, was interested in some form of fashion, a means by which to keep him manipulated and under check until we actually get down to the Earth's wound? Perhaps. Tristan, uh, well, look at sins. How do we even know if what he's saying is not just to get released of our prison? Then trucks, it might be. And yet, what if it isn't? What if he knows the way? It would be foolish to just kill him and lose that information. True, but it would also be a waste to go there and release him. We have a slave camp. Can he not work there until we, if we ever decide to follow his dreams? I do think so, should these humans survive the slave camp. What good if not, does... they would not have survived the travel down there anyway. I'm the Draegar. At any rate, I believe there is some merit to it. These humans would not have risked so much to wander in the Underdark unless they thought they could better their lives. Anything is better than a drag or slave camp. Oh, frown. clearly does not agree. I think Gorval has shown them the error of your own words. Yeah, Gorn looks a little bit, a uh, little bit, a uh, little bit offended <laughs> at such a suggestion, and you know he sort of mumbles something to himself. Well, what does what does human know of the underdog anyway? Really, it turns out better. What do we know about humans? <sighs> They're good slaves. Nah, I'm just kidding. No, absolutely not. I can't even see. Which makes it even more weird why they're even here. Exactly, which is why it is not so venturesome to think that there is some merit to this. Should they survive long enough, we might be able to make some use of them. However, I don't feel like going to look for a surface at this time. Gorval uh, pops in and says, As far as the slaves told us, my lords, it seems like... Uh, they once lived on the surface, but the Dwerga attacked their village and dragged them down into the Underdark. The captain says that he does not recall exactly when this happened, having lost all sense of time and over the years he has been down here. To my mind, he has actually adapted quite well as he speaks not only under common but smatterings of Gnome and other strange dialects. He does not seem to be helpless in the dark either. He does not? Go on, not. No. Isn't that peculiar for a human? He shrugs, perhaps. But if one sense is blinded, other senses can grow more sensitive. I see. What of the female? Anything from her? He shrugs. No, not really. I would assume that she is a love interest of the captain. That is the feeling I have gotten from my sessions with them. The captain never screams as loudly as when I am torturing her. Eleanor well, just sort of flicks her wrist. It matters little. They can stay down there until we require them. Uh, Goral uh, looks over at Eleanor. Then, Matron, do you wish me to take any certain precautions 
uh, to see that they do not uh, unnecessarily perish in the camps. Uh, perhaps, just to make sure that they do work, they might be there for the rest of their lives, and we should not waste them simply for a potential even of a use. You know, uh, You can always tell them that we are still preparing for the time at which we will go, but that we have very long lives compared to them, and that it could take an indeterminate amount of time. At any rate, because they have proven themselves to be so resourceful in escaping from one slave camp, uh, they could prove themselves to be some sport if they find any weaknesses the kobolds are too stupid to exploit. Coral nods. Ah, yes, a testing of, um, of our slave camp's defenses, then, as it were. Very well, I shall... Endeavor to see them survive until the time the rest of the council's deign to speak to them. So, the male says he has visions. Maybe he's a magic user. Yeah, seems to be perhaps, Lady Trislin. That is not my field of expertise. Uh, but perhaps as the high priestess, you could endeavor to find out. Ah, uh, why not? If at any point the captain should mention that his visions are getting less frequent or are fading or whatever, please inform me immediately. Well, me and Sakari can find out if he's a magic user. If he is, then we definitely need to keep a close eye on him. Is there anything else? Other than bitch, I'm fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> By trade deals and I know, fucking eight BP, like draining away one per turn. Diplomatic edicts. Oh yeah. Thought really? I forgot, eh? Really, Ned, you are destroyed mm. by life. I didn't forget. Uh, Might as well just drop the whole thing, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> this point. Find a hole and pour money into it. <laughs> Why the hell not? Uh, Mm. We're go- we are gonna that take guy will be the cane. richest gnome in in all the look, assets. Look, 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 look. Uh, we, I, we're I, gonna I, take your credit card and cut it over. Look, look. I'm not gonna say everything, but I'm just saying that would have been the difference between my character living and my character dying. I doubt it. That sounds pretty important. No, no. That, that's actually a concrete, truthful statement. It would have made yeah, a I, difference. Uh, yeah, I, I can, I can, I can validate that statement. That's actually true. Now, now I'm curious. Why, why, why won't he tell us what what he used them? That's a lot of money. That's he's a drow. <laughs> because I'm evil. Exactly. Honest Rillanid's discount lies. <laughs> <laughs> he Honest can Rillanid. spend money on himself from the treasury. He can do it retroactively, even. Uh, <laughs> okay, Tristan has one thing, hmm? actually. Mm-hmm. To make sure nothing like whatever. Rid- hey, get back Hello. here! Hello. <laughs> Council's not over. Very well. <laughs> high, high priestess yells. Everyone just turns around. To like, so make sure nothing like whatever Rillinid is doing doesn't happen again. This is not to repeat again. We can't do decisions like this. Just one of us. We have to talk to the council. Not just one of us can make a deal like this. So whatever deals you, either of you expects to do on your own is not going to be... Uh, what's it, uh, what is called? Valid. Valid. Before it has been talked about in the council. She's looking at Rillanid. Rillanid offers a playful shrug. Rillanet, this is not a game. No, it is not. 
it was a decision made to ensure this kingdom's survivability long before it actually came into existence. I can certainly agree not to make any of the decisions like that. However, as we actually have something which exists, surely I am as devoted to the success of my family as you are, Drislin. Of course, but you are not to go off alone and just make decisions like that without the council knowing. Well, I have no problem with that. Zen speaks up. I agree with Rillinet, and he suddenly frowns deeply as he realizes what he just said. <laughs> Sometimes a certain independence is required. Not by the money f from the treasury me, on our me, own gain. Me, Miku speaks up. Uh, if there are uh, liberties taken by the treasure uh, with the treasury without me knowing, he sort of looks down at his paper. I cannot guarantee financial success. Just in uh, looks at Neri, matron. You should know that this is not something we all can just do. Take money for ourselves. Well, oh, Larry Norton says, no, sister. We cannot just take the money for ourselves. However, what is done is done, and we will have to work with it. But we can... So much diplomatic... Um, Issues have proven more costly than I anticipated. It seems that the traditional drow diplomacy uh, does have some merit to it. But still, we have to make Today, sure that this... In the future, brother, um, before such uh, diplomacy is drafted, could you estimate the price of a simple invasion? <laughs> Perhaps in the long run, that would be cheaper. Very well. If you look at Tristan, I do not think we should spend money. However, if an exquisite opportunity shows itself, one could, of course, be faulted for not acting independently. Now, I'm not saying it's something that should be done. However, a law against it would be uh, too excessive. Tristan looks at an area. For all we know, he could have spent the money on himself. Really? Really? <laughs> Which you actually, I bet you did. Rillman actually goes muttering, and he'll actually revert to Skisra. Because <laughs> no one understands. Well, actually. Oh, she will, <laughs> she will counter my revert <laughs> to Aklo. Yeah. Uh, Neri flicks around. This council meeting is over. This is but squabbling. Tristan, being very annoyed, just gets up and leaves. And ah, she will go to Garvel. Just take me to the mail. I'll talk to him now. Uh, very well, High Priestess. This way. Great. <laughs> I'm not going into the dark with you. <laughs> this this way, priestess. There is no need to be afraid of the dark. I actually think everything here is dark. We have no real reason to have light everywhere. Uh, sure yeah, we do. We, you know. want, we want to see in things that aren't black and white. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like decorative well, candles. I would stuff. love to. Yeah, make... all the beauty of of the fortress, you know. I would love to make the fortress, but uh, I have not. We'll build a, a castle at some point. I, I haven't had uh, the response from Jonas yet. If I'm allowed to. To build a castle? To, 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 yeah, to... <laughs> anyway, let's talk to the guy. Hi. Uh, and Doria, no, she, she gets up and says, uh, then I will introduce myself to this uh, Xan uh, sage and see what I can find out. Perhaps a exchange of ideas can enrich both our cultures, hmm? Oh, then leaning back says... It, it refers to itself as Zano the Second Sage, and it regards itself as the official ambassador from the city of Zan. Jinons, I shall be cordial then. I am the Magister, after all, representing the Council. I am sure you will do your best. Elenary nods, and she just take a look at Tarlin. How does he react to Adaria being here? Yeah, he's uh, certainly, you know, glancing at her. 
Uh, other than that, he doesn't really seem to say much with her here. Uh, if he's feeling anything, he is keeping up his appearances quite well. Such a player. <laughs> what? And Dorian gets up and gets out. Sandor goes away with his harp, yep. plinking on it happily. So, as soon as Endaria leaves and the footsteps can be heard down the stairs, Brilliant Axel looks at Tarlin and says, Do keep an eye on her. He nods. Of course, my lord. 